Hello everybody, this is Troy, also known as RC Pongo on the forums. And this is the start of the video where uh, I will be showing you how I build my puzzles. Now, for those of you that may not have seen the earlier video, this is not just a cube. These parts are completely uh, uh, built uh, to build a puzzle and uh, everything is completely functional when you print it out on a 3D printer. And I'll be showing the steps uh, involved to make something very similar to this. Now, we're not restricted uh, simply to a, a cube shape. Uh, again, uh, my previous video shows this a bit, but uh, we're very e easily able to make uh, different mods, such as uh, a windmill cube like this, or you can actually just, just take some rotations and, and, and plug them in, come up with your own, or, or try uh, set values. Uh, we don't even need to use a cube. We can we can take a look at uh, doing the same thing with a cylinder. Uh, uh, just coming up with your own uh, ideas can sometimes uh, lead different places. There's uh, uh, another one here. Just while I was playing around tonight before making this video, I, I came up with this shape. And uh, I think this is going to be my next uh, project for 3D printing. Uh, because I'm, I'm very happy with the way this one looks and uh, so this right here with these uh, angles uh, creates a pretty nice looking puzzle and uh, I can even uh, because we're in the computer one nice thing is we can even visualize beforehand uh, what something uh, even would turn like so I can take a look and I can see what that looks like uh, and yeah, I mean that that looks like something that it would be fun to solve. So that's that's definitely a project I'm interested in working on. So uh, without anything else here, I think uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna we're going to uh, restart Blender uh, with file new here, and uh, we're going to get started. Now, when you first start Blender, it's going to look uh, probably very similar to what you're seeing on the screen right here, and uh, if you haven't already got Blender, uh, just so you know, you can go to blender.org, and it is a free download. It's a completely open source software, free for anyone to grab. And uh, there is definitely a learning curve to this, so uh, you will need to put in a little bit of time. Um, but hopefully in this series, I'll be able to show you uh, some steps to maybe uh, help you along. And uh, wherever possible, I'll try to uh, point you in the direction uh, where you can find more information. So the main interface here of Blender uh, has a couple things you're going to see. Um, there's generally a camera and a light and a cube in your, in your base scene. Now to select things with Blender, you use the right mouse button. So uh, that's what I'm doing here. If you happen to uh, drag when you're on an object, you can, you can drag that position again using the, the, the right button. Uh, that's not how I usually move things, but I'm, I'm just kind of giving you some info here. I'm just going to go ahead and delete those, which you can do by either pressing the delete key on the keyboard or the X key on the keyboard. Uh, the X key is maybe a little odd for some people, but it's very useful uh, just because it keeps your hand on the left side of the keyboard. Uh, so the first thing I'd like to talk about is your viewport here. Uh, the big window is going to be where a lot of everything is going to happen. Uh, down here, you've got a, a timeline uh, for animation. Uh, we're not really going to be discussing animation. Uh, you can resize these windows anything you want. You can actually go to the icon that's on the bottom. It would be here or here. Any of these windows can be changed to anything else, so I could make this another 3D view if I wanted. Uh, or these triangles right here can be used to uh, make multiple windows. Uh, I would suggest looking up a video on the Blender interface uh, to understand how these work a little bit more. Uh, but just know that we all that is very customizable. Over here on the left side, we've got a panel which I'm going to call the T panel. And I'm going to call the T panel because if you hit the T key on the keyboard, uh, you can you can hide it or bring it back. Now you can also just grab the edge. You can pull it away. There's a little plus right here that will bring it back. Uh, on the right side, there's another one, and again, there's a plus right here. 
and this panel is the end panel uh, and again and because the end key is going to hide and show it we're going to use this panel on a lot uh, because it's going to show us our position rotation and scale of our objects and that's going to be pretty important as we get in we can also see our dimensions exactly of our object so we can scale uh, an object to to an exact uh, measurement <coughs> uh, over here you're going to have a lot of tools a lot of things that I use in blender uh, there are buttons for over here but I end up using hotkeys for and I'll, I'll try to call those out as many times as possible um, but I apologize in advance if I if I miss some of those as as we go uh, one thing that you will need to install uh, it comes with blender so you just need to enable it is called bool tool and that's going to show up right here as a tab and that's going to allow us to do a few things and let me show you where to enable that uh, to begin with so under your uh, file menu you're going to look and you're going to find user preferences and in user preferences there's there's a number of things uh, that you can change and look for um, but the thing that we're looking for right here is under add-ons and that is there and what's going to be do, done is called bool tool b-o-o-l t-o-o-l and it's not showing up in the search because it's under the testing uh, section here and here I can see bool tool and this is checked so all you need to do is check that and that will and that's it it's installed and then go ahead and hit save user settings and then that will be saved the next time you load blender you won't have to do this step again and there are many many add-ons here the only reason that they're not enabled by default is just uh, memory efficiency um, as long as I'm in the user preferences I'll discuss a few other things that I've set that are that are different than the defaults um, zoom to mouse position and rotate around selection are two that I have set uh, that's just like it sounds uh, if you are if you have the cursor over here on your screen and you you zoom using the scroll wheel on your mouse it will it will zoom exactly to that section versus zooming around the center of your screen and the same with rotate around selection it it will rotate around what you have selected rather than rotating around the center of your screen um, if you turn those on and off you should be able to see the behavior difference uh, the other thing that I change is release confirms uh, if you had dragged objects earlier you may have noticed that when you let go of the right button the the object was still stuck on your on your mouse uh, I find this kind of annoying so I like to have release confirms uh, what happens with release confirms is when you let go of the mouse you drop the object where you are if you don't have that on uh, which is the default uh, it stays stuck on your mouse cursor and you need to um, left click to confirm or right click to cancel and um, it's just an extra step I don't feel you need to do uh, under input there is one thing that I do change here and this is a personal preference but uh, just to show you what I've done under 3d view and 3d view global uh, I use rotate and move by default the middle mouse button will orbit your view and you hold shift middle button to pan I've actually reversed those uh, so I can use middle button button to pan and I hold shift to orbit uh, again that's just a personal preference uh, but those of you that are familiar with other programs may may want to know where to change those uh, themes allows you to change colors um, anything you want there are some good presets uh, for some other programs but I like to just leave everything at the defaults for that um, file system there's really nothing you need to change here system nothing you need to change uh, if you are doing rendering eventually uh, you'll want to set this to CUDA if you have an NVIDIA card uh, that will make your rendering much faster uh, and you can enable your card if you have multiple cards here and that's it uh, just make sure when you've changed the settings uh, to save user settings if you do screw them up you can get them back at any time by uh, load factory settings here and that will re-enable everything uh, back to the way it was the very first time you ran it so let me see where we're at here we are at about 10 minutes I apologize I'm going to try to keep these two around 10 minutes a piece so I'm going to uh, stop this video now and we're going to start uh, on the next section